Hello everyone, today we're making three recipes that are packed with flavor and comfort, but still healthy enough to help you stay on track during the holidays. This first recipe might come as a surprise, but it's for hot chocolate, not traditionally a health food because it has a lot of dairy and refined sugar, but I'm gonna show you how to make it healthy, but still creamy and satisfying, not watery. It's gonna be vegan, refined sugar-free, and full of antioxidants and minerals. And because it's the holidays, it's gonna be a gingerbread hot chocolate. The first step for this gingerbread hot chocolate is to bring some plant-based milk to a simmer on the stove. I'm using oat milk, but you can use any plant-based milk you like. Then we're adding some raw cacao powder, which has lots of antioxidants, magnesium, and iron, followed by our gingerbread spices. We're using ground ginger, nutmeg, cinnamon, and allspice. To sweeten the hot cocoa, we're adding a little bit of pure maple syrup. You don't really need too much, along with some blackstrap molasses, which brings that characteristic gingerbread flavor and is also high in magnesium, iron, as well as calcium. Whisk the mixture together and bring it to a rapid simmer. Meanwhile, you'll whisk together some arrowroot powder with some more plant-based milk to make a slurry. This is the secret to making a really thick, creamy hot chocolate that's still wholesome. Pour the slurry into the simmering hot chocolate and you just need to whisk it for 30 to 45 seconds until it starts to become really thick. If you use cornstarch instead, it'll take a little bit longer. The hot chocolate should get really thick and creamy and it is amazing as is, but if you wanna make it more of an indulgent holiday treat, go ahead and top it with some coconut whipped cream and shaved dark chocolate. It's so thick and creamy, it's almost like pudding and it's so good for you. Depending on what kind of plant-based milk you use, in just one serving, you're gonna get over a half day's worth of magnesium, a quarter of your day's worth of iron, and at least a quarter of your calcium needs. So it's basically a health food and you should drink it every single day. This next recipe is for a salad that I make every year at the holidays. And despite the fact that it's so healthy, Everyone always asks for the recipe, so I'm sure you're gonna love it. The base consists of like two of the healthiest foods on earth, Brussels sprouts and kale. We are eating them raw, so you do wanna make sure you slice both fairly thinly so that they're easier to digest. And to easily slice Brussels sprouts without using a knife, I use my food processor, which is really handy. Especially if you have tiny Brussels sprouts like this, it's gonna be really hard to slice them by hand. Ideally, I would use the slicing disc, but I can't find mine. So I'm using the shredding disc, which is gonna be a little bit finer. You just attach it to your food processor, and then you put the lid on top, and then you just feed the Brussels sprouts directly into here, and you use whatever this thing is called to push it down. How fast was that? It's a lot easier than using a knife. So if you have a food processor, definitely try that out. For the base of the salad, start by slicing up some lacinato kale into really thin strips. If kale isn't your thing, feel free to use a different green. Then for the Brussels sprouts, remove any of the tough or brown outer leaves and then chop off the tough ends. Place the Brussels sprouts in your food processor and use the slicing or shredding disc to slice them thinly. If you don't have a food processor, you can use a knife, but be sure to be extra careful. For the rest of the ingredients, we've got some crisp but ripe apples that we'll slice up. I like to use a few different varieties because it brings an interesting textural and flavor combination. You can also use pears in the salad if you prefer. I'm also adding some pomegranate seeds, and to easily cut a pomegranate, score along the ridged portions of the fruit using a knife. A wedge should easily come out, and then you can pick the seeds from that without creating too much of a mess. Toss together the kale and Brussels sprouts, and I like to add some toasted walnuts for crunch and healthy fats. Arrange the sliced apples on top, add some pomegranate seeds, and finally some sliced avocado for creaminess and more healthy fats. And for the creamy cashew dressing, simply mix together some water, soaked raw cashews, salt, a few seasonings, lemon juice, and extra virgin olive oil. Blend that up in a food processor or high-powered blender until it's really creamy and smooth. Pour the dressing over the salad and toss to combine. But if you wanna keep leftovers, store the undressed salad and dressing separately. When you're craving something that's hearty and filling and sticks to your ribs, but in a good way, this is the recipe for you. It's for an Indian spiced chickpea sweet potato stew. It's one of those recipes that tastes even better the next day and it's a really great option for meal prep. To get started, we'll prepare our aromatics, which includes dicing up two yellow onions as well as mincing some fresh garlic and ginger. And to peel ginger root, it's really easy to do this with a spoon. My preferred way of mincing ginger is to use a microplane, but if you don't have one, you can use a sharp knife to mince it up. But be sure that your ginger is relatively new and fresh because ginger that's been sitting around for a while can be really tough and stringy and difficult to slice. 
Since this is a chickpea and sweet potato stew, we're also gonna chop up some sweet potatoes. You wanna make sure that you dice the sweet potatoes really finely so that they fully cook through in the stew. Now for the spices. This is my Indian spice tin, and this is where I keep my most commonly used Indian spices handy in one place. To start, toast some black mustard seeds as well as whole cumin seeds until they start to sizzle and pop and become really aromatic and fragrant. Toasting spices unlocks their flavors and amps up the final aroma in the dish. Then add a bit of coconut oil to cook the aromatics. Add the onions and saute them until they're softened and start to turn golden about five to seven minutes. And then you'll add the minced garlic and ginger and cook for one to two minutes. Add a mixture of ground Indian spices, garam masala, coriander, red chili powder and turmeric, along with black pepper and a few bay leaves. Add in some cooked chickpeas and toss them around to coat in the spices. Cook for about five to six minutes, but don't stir very often so that they can get a little crispy and browned on the outside. This will enhance the texture and the flavor of the chickpeas. Next, you'll deglaze the pan by pouring in some water, then add some canned or jarred crushed tomatoes as well as the diced sweet potatoes along with some salt. Bring the mixture to a boil and then reduce the heat to medium low and simmer for about 30 minutes until the sweet potatoes are tender and the stew has thickened. Next, you'll add in some finely chopped greens. I'm using Swiss chard, but you can use any variety of greens you like. Cover the pan and cook for about five minutes or until the greens are wilted. Keep in mind that if you use a more tender green like spinach, it will take less time to cook. Finally, finish the stew with some fresh chopped cilantro and a squeeze of lemon juice to balance the flavors. And to stay on track with a healthy diet throughout the year, what you really need is to build up a repertoire of meal prep strategies, which is harder than it sounds, so I put together a short playlist for you. It's just three videos, but they're packed with lots of tips that will make meal prep a lot easier.